Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I mean, no, in his word, God said, I work who will make. Right. 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 Amen. Praise God. God, you're good. Praise the like God. Sometimes all we need to do is just step back out of the way and let God work. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Because he is the miracle worker. Yes, he is. He's the way maker. Come on. He's the promise keeper. Come yes, on. Sir, Praise me. God. Praise God. Book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and begin at verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, in thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise God. Praise Him one more time. God, we love you. God, so thankful for your spirit that we fill in this place tonight. Thank you for your word, God, to those that are gathered together to hear your word tonight. Anoint use us for thy glory and on our ears to receive your word. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Praise God. And you may be seated. I'm going to go back to that verse 6 for my thought tonight. He said, Wherefore, this is Paul writing to Timothy. He said, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Praise God. Praise God. For just a little while tonight, I want to preach you this thought, just stir it up. Stir it up. Mm -hmm. As I begin to, to this afternoon, begin to study this, I looked up the word stir. Uh, you might say this, this could be a continuation right. of, of my message this morning because the word stir sometimes uh, uh, means to fan a flame. To fan a flame. Praise God. Amen. So, so just, just stir it up. Uh, Paul said, I want to put you in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. Now, uh, a lot of times, maybe, maybe, maybe Timothy uh, had a, a special gift. Maybe he, had, he, he operated in some of the gifts of the Spirit. But Paul said, said by, by the laying on of my hands, Makes me think a lot of times when you're going back and you're studying the apostles and the disciples and the apostles that when they when, when they would pray for somebody and lay their hands on them, they would receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible calls it in Acts 2.38 the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The gift of the Holy Ghost. So, so and possibly uh, Paul was telling Timothy, I'm going to put you in remembrance of this. That you stir up the gift that is in you. In other words, stir up the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that is in you. you stir it up. Right. Stir it up. He said, he said, in that gift of God which is in me by the putting on of my hand. Listen, so, sometimes we just have to stir up this gift that is right. in us. Mm -hmm. If God has given you the Holy Ghost, He's given you a gift. Right. Yes, it is. Because it is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes, sometimes we just got to stir it up. Right. We just got to stir it up. We, we, we let this gift mm -hmm. that God has given us that is inside of us, we let it lie dormant too long and right. too many times when we ought to be stirring it up right. and, and letting it go and, and letting God move through us and use us for the glory of God. Right. Thank you. He said, stir it up. He said, he said because God ha has it given you the spirit of fear. You know why? You know why sometimes we don't stir it up? It's cause of fear. Right. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's 
God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. If, if, if we could grasp a hold of this one thing, God has not given us a spirit of fear, Amen. but of power. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says, plainly, in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive what? Power after that the Holy Ghost has come yeah. upon you. Amen. So he has given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Of power. What? What? Power by what? By the gift that's in us. Right. Mm -hmm. By the gifts that's in us. Power. In the blood. And of a sound mind. See, as, as the Holy Ghost begins to move on us and, and, and begins to move in our heart and in our life like it ought to and like we ought to let it and, and we begin to stir it up. It, it, it refreshes us. It renews us. It, uh, it, it brings back excitement into our heart. See, to stir also means to awake or to rekindle or to rouse up or bring excitement. Right. Huh? Amen. So, there, 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 there are some times that we simply need to stir up the gift That's right. that is in us. Praise God. One of the things I begin to look, one of the things that I found as, as the Spirit of God would begin to stir me in, and especially, I went back and looked at Paul. Paul being the one that was writing to Timothy and telling him to stir the gift up. There were some things, if you, if you get back into the book of Acts, there are some things that you find that Paul was stirred about. Mm -hmm. right. And if we stir up the gift within us, then we ought to be stirred about the same things that Paul was stirred about. Amen. You begin to look in Acts, the 17th chapter. Verse 16, it simply says this. It says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, mm -hmm. his spirit was stirred in him. Yes. His spirit was stirred in him. Holy Ghost was stirred him up while he was waiting in, at, at, in Athens when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. His spirit was stirred in him. His spirit was stirred in him. He, the, the Holy Ghost was stirring him up about the idolatry that he saw in, in, in the city. See, there's something about it. When we begin to stir the Holy Ghost inside of us, it begins to give us a greater love and compassion for the lost. Amen. Huh? huh? Maybe I'll say it again. When, when we stir the Holy Ghost up within us like, like it ought to be stirred up within us, it, it gives us a greater love and compassion for the lost. Mm -hmm. Oh, again, he looked, he said, Bible said his spirit was stirred within him when he saw the city holy given to idolatry. In other words, it was full of idols. It was full of idols. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. There certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? What will this babbler say? And others, some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So what, what happened? The Bible said, again, in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then the Bible describes it as the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and the gift that was, in, that was in Timothy and by the leg on of the hands of Paul, Paul said, yeah, you need to stir up that gift that is in you. And when you begin to, to, to stir it up, Bible said it again in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be what? Witnesses. Amen. You shall be witnesses. So, so when I stir the Holy Ghost up in me like I should stir it up, when I see the city given over to idols, it causes the Spirit to stir in me 
and should give me a greater love and compassion for the lost that I preach Jesus and Him crucified right. unto them. Right. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, it, 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 some of you others can vouch for it. When, when I listen uh, uh, to the craziness, uh, when I listen to the news these days and the craziness that's going on and the ideas and opinions that people have that have gone so far uh, to one side that it stirs something up in me because I realize they have no idea what the truth of God is and what the truth of Jesus Christ is. Even some going as far as saying we're doing the Lord's work. They're not doing my God's work. Hmm? They're not doing the God I serve work. Amen. He's going to say, many, many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we done many wonderful works in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Come on. Come on. But when we stir, that's what happens when we begin to stir the Holy Ghost up. Ha, ha, ha. When we begin to stir the Holy Ghost up within us, there's something about sin that we can't stand. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine where all thou speakest is. They said he's 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 set forth of strange gods because he preached Jesus and him crucified. We we got a world out there that says you're wrong when you say Jesus is the only way to heaven. They'll say you're wrong. The world out there will say you're wrong. But he said, and they said, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. And we would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time and nothing in too much time on their hand. Spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. Or some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hills and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things that ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by, behold, your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. What, what, what caused Paul? What caused Paul to get, get this way? He was stirred up about the idols that he was, was in the city. So this guilt that was in him began to get stirred up. We're too easy. We're too easy to try to turn it off. We're too easy to try to shut it out. The, the sin that is going on around us and say, well, that's just them. I don't believe that, but that, you know, that's just them. That's just the way, you know, it, 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 it stick our head in the, in, in, in the sand, as they say, like an ostrich. When we ought to be stirred up about it. Right. We ought to be stirred up about it. He said, I'm going to declare this unknown God to you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands as, he, as though He needed anything, seeing He gives to all life and breath and all things. He said, this God that I serve is not made with hands. Right. It's not none of your idols. It's not none of your idols. And had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and had determined time before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. But they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after Him and find Him though He be not far from every one of us. Right. Right. For in Him we live and move and have our being. You know, the great, the great cry that we hear these these days is they're a racist. Yeah. They're a racist. Mm -hmm. 
But I tell you that we're all of one race. Right? Amen. And that is the human race. Amen. But I said, how do you know? Drop back, drop back up to verse 26. Mm -hmm. and, and read carefully what it says. And have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the faces of the earth. Mm -hmm. One race, and that's the human race. Amen. Hmm? Amen. That they should seek the Lord. He said, He said, in him we live and move and have our being. Paul, Paul was stirred up. Paul was stirred up. He stirred the city up. He stirred the Pharisees up. He stirred the Sadducees up because the gift that was in him was stirred up. The Holy Ghost that was within him was stirred up. So we ought to be concerned. We ought to stir that gift up within us until our love and our compassion increases for the lost. Look at look look. Here's another thing. Look at Second Peter, the third chapter, in verse one. He said, "The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you." And this is Peter writing. Mm -hmm. In both which I stir up your pure minds. By way of remembrance. He said, here's something you ought to get stirred about. Here's something you ought to get stirred about. See, he said that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. We're there. Mm -hmm. We're there. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That there, there is something, something about it. That in a lot of your... Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see how to put this. In a lot of your established religions... Even though that even those that preach Jesus, sometimes you don't find a whole lot of preaching about the coming of the Lord. A lot of them want to preach on uh, uh, how you can uh, benefit on prosperity, on, on, on you know love one another. And here's how you can prosper and fail to preach the return of Jesus. But Paul said, I want to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that there's going to be scoffers in the last day walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, and perdition of ungodly men. He said, I want to stir you up that you remember these things. That you know these things. If these things are brought to your mind, church, we should never forget that that trumpet could sound any time. Right. And the Lord could call His church home. He said, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is a 
with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Huh? Mm -hmm. He's not willing that any should perish. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Paul, uh, Peter writing, he said, I want to stir you up about this. I want to stir you up. What manner of person ought you to be if you know his coming is soon? I want to stir you up. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens shall be on fire. And when it speaks of the day of God or the day of the Lord, it's talking about the day of his wrath. Amen. Hmm. I plan on being gone before the day of his wrath. Amen. Why? Because the Bible said he's not appointed you to wrath. That's right. That's right. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Paul wrote, he said, he said I, want, I want to stir you up about some things. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, he said, I, uh, I want to stir you up. I want you to stir that gift up that is within you. You know that's what God wants from us? He wants us to stir that gift up that is within us. Right? Mm -hmm. Stir that gift up that is within us. Listen. Stir up the Holy Ghost right. within you until the excitement in serving God returns. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I said, stir, stir up the Holy Ghost within you until the excitement in serving God returns. Amen. Until you're enjoying and having fun yeah. in serving God. And there's joy in the Lord. Right. Praise God. It excites me. It excites me because, because I, I, I mean, here later, I'm, I'm seeing people return to the joy in serving the Lord. Right. Praise God. Praise God. I, I enjoy seeing people get excited about the Holy Ghost. I enjoy seeing people get excited about serving God. Amen. Praise God. People letting their light shine. People stirring that gift up within us. And the excitement of coming back into their life of serving God and doing something for God. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Because it is a joy. It is a joy. Because He said, I came that you might have life life more abundant. Abundant life. Above and beyond. Above and beyond. So stir that gift up that is within you. Stir the Holy Ghost up that is within you because that's the greatest gift that God can give you. Amen. Yes, it is. Huh? Yes, it is. That's the greatest gift that God can give you. So simply stir it up. Somebody said, how, how do I stir it up? Worship. Mm -hmm. Worship, prayer, excitement, joy. Whether it's through praising Him, whether it's through singing, huh? whether it's through prayer, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Whatever it is, and however, listen, there, 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 are, there are songs that are sung sometimes that begins to stir that gift up in us. There's the word that is preached sometimes that stirs that gift up within us. 
There are ways. There are ways that we can let God stir the gift up that is within you. That's all I'm saying. <coughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.